I seen one guy who was like he had a collection of these things. I was like, holy cow, man! How the hell did you get that many subscribers? I mean, it, it gets. Who's crazy. the guy's name again? The the kid in Florida that I was going to team up with. No, no, the number one. Uh, Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast. Right. Oh, yeah. Right, right, right. It's Halloween. It's coming to that time, brother. Yeah, I know. I got a, I got a big Halloween party. Oh, night nice. Daredevil. Uh oh. Yeah, I got to show the jawline. I think. I like it. I like it a lot. I think Daredevil is a good costume for sure. I think it might be Spider Man this year. I had to resort. We're supposed to go as the Warriors. Remember that movie from the eighties? Do I remember it? It wasn't from the eighties. I think it was 70, 79. 79. Yeah, yeah. seventy nine actually. Warriors um, come out to play. Eh? Yes. So anybody like the the concept was brought up by Skeleton because we're going to this. I have the, I sponsor this huge Halloween party that's going to be going on this Saturday, and he's like, "Let's go as like the Warriors." I'm like, "So these guys got all these vests and the whole night. I could get my vest in time." So. They're going to have all these vests. It'll be pretty cool. Will anybody know except for like, I'd say somebody of our age or older? Definitely I wouldn't not, even, for sure. I wouldn't even think the 40-year-olds would know that one. So so you're you're impressed. I'm impressed that you even know that movie. Of course. I've watched everything, man, before my time and, and obviously to the present. I, I love movies. So, And Warriors was definitely a good movie. Everybody's like, what, what's the... The background on it, so you know, I mean, that's that's all over the story, but yeah, good movie for sure. The early years, uh, I wanted to, I, I did go as uh, not uh, Snake Plissken, but uh, uh, Jack Burton one year, Ooh. Jack Burton. Um, so uh, that's Kurt Russell for you guys that yeah. don't know, Big Trouble Little China. So I had, I got the uh, the tank top and everything, and then the yeah. hair was a, a good mullet like it is today. Oh, yeah. Um, Oh, so yeah. it was uh, pretty good. Yeah, that's that's super cool. It's super cool. So, you got anything for Titan? What's he gonna dress up as this year? You know, uh, Homelander. Homelander. Oh, nice. Homelander's son. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so when we when he and I go walking, I'm gonna be we're gonna be Homelander and Homelander's son. Oh, that would be cool. That would definitely be yeah. cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's fitting. It's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a good yes, one. Sir. What about you? Are you? Uh, uh, excited you still running high off of the weekend definitely run half the weekend for sure coming back you know um you know just overlooking you know everything went on for sure it took, you know because i didn't get a mint to breathe out there i'm sure you didn't either it's just been you know been kind of crazy so getting back and back in the routine and then kind of looking like hey listen how do we do uh, what, what else did we get out of uh, you know out there and everything like that but it was a great experience obviously uh you know overcoming the adversity and challenges that we did and then have, making the new memories that we did too as well. So I think it was good all the way around. Um, definitely a lot of people there. Awesome to see the fans and all the supporters. Yeah. I mean, super cool, man. Super, really super cool. I, I, it, was, uh, it was a great booth to be at. And uh, we had so many cool people come by and hang out. And yeah, I absolutely. This is one of my, again, one of my favorites that I will remember for a long, long time because it was so many good the fans are obviously just hanging out and waiting, waiting. Uh, I appreciate that, how long they waited to get, you know, into the booth. But uh, again, everything that goes on there. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, the stage was awesome. Lift us off the ground. You know, that was cool. And then the, the magazine cover came out awesome. I think that came out awesome. Like, perfect. Uh, you know, and uh, the pictures got uploaded to Facebook. So anybody that was in those pictures, go to the Type Medical Center Facebook. That's the only place we could put albums at. So at that point, you guys can go on there and grab your pictures too, as well. If you had pictures, Facebook would that be at Titan Medical? Titan Medical Center, yes, sir. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, I Just can't put it on like Instagram. Put I wish I, I wish I could. Yeah, you know, Facebook is good. Because is that a like page? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a business page. You check on that, because I, I think all they have to do is like to see the be able to see the whole thing. And I'll tell yeah, the fans. I'll, I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you the pictures too if you don't got them. I think we're gonna try to do a little collage, a, a fold through with all the all the fans that came out there. Yeah, no, I think it'd be really really cool. A little montage. Uh, so we got back. Uh, did you get some workout in yesterday or today? 
I did today for sure. I went this morning, you know, as soon as I dropped Peter off to his little training and they still don't got school tomorrow. Like it's crazy. So, like, yeah. What's going on out there? What's going, what's the four one one. So, you know, I, obviously I wasn't here on the ground. I would call everybody, check on everybody. Everybody was all right. You know, I mean, a lot of debris, you know, some power in certain areas. I mean, finally power got on from most of, most of Tampa yesterday. So that was good. But when I was driving downtown yesterday, I mean, obviously like there was lights that still didn't have power. So there was like cops all around making sure people aren't running like four way stops. And at that point, you know, not causing accidents, but majority of things got taken care of yesterday. It was just a lot of debris. What I seen, you know, obviously a lot of people got flooded. That was in certain areas and a lot of people lost a lot of stuff. So, I mean, you know, we're, I don't know. It's, it's kind of crazy, but it, it seems like everything's getting back to normal, but we heard from the school yesterday that basically like, you know, majority of, there's a good amount of schools that still had water in them and about a hundred that didn't have power. So most of those schools I think are back to where they need to be now. And they said, they're going to bring back the staff tomorrow. And at that point, Thursday, we should, should have school. And your places and everything is okay. Thank God. Yeah, I mean, you know, the back, you know, where I have the baseball and that, and, and, and uh, uh, um, you know, at that point it came down a little bit. So, I, yeah, I got to put that up, but it's nothing compared to what other people had what to go these through. These guys are going through. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even compare it to that. Like, it's it's very minimal damage to nothing. So, we were very lucky and very blessed at, at the house not to lose power. My dad was there. Uh, Sharice's mom was there. So, that was really good. And, um, yeah, the office survived. And we're, not, we're right by the port over here. So, I'm always kind of worried. When something like that comes in because you know being that close to water anything can happen well what do we have then for this week let's jump into peptides sure 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 so the therapy of the week this week is cjc with ipromelin so cjc 1295 with ipromelin um and this is going down the path of the ghrhs the growth hormone releasing hormone peptides um being able to boost your own natural growth hormone levels um being able to get some anti-aging effect out of it and uh, being able to recover and repair a lot better and sleep better. So these all go into function with CJC with Ipomorelin. So it's, it's a great peptide. And this was one of the peptides was on the ban list that has recently been taken off. So that's a big, big plus. And then I was reading um, just today, it's really crazy how things are going um, with the FDA and, and Big Pharma. So I read today, that the FDA has reversed its stance on GLP-1s with the shortage. And if anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, let me explain. So GLP-1s were both on the shortage list. So semi-glutide, tirzepatide. So Ozempic, Morjorno, these main products could not keep up with the demand or what needed was needed. So they go on a shortage list, any drug that can't do this. And when it goes on a shortage list and the compounding pharmacies can make these medications to get the drug out there. So there's not a shortage in that point or to fill the gap per se. But when that shortage ends, the compounding pharmacies are supposed to stop making those drugs because the commercial product is available and they own the patent on it. So this happened last week. So like last week, my email is blowing up with, um, you know, with vendors that have the commercial product and saying, hey, compounding pharmacies aren't going to make this. You know, we have, you know, a good option for you if you want to switch over to us. And, you know, as of today, I look at it, I'm like, oh, my God. So the FDA reversed the stance that they did last week in saying this. It's really crazy how that works. And it's got to be like, I mean, I read the article and I'll send it to you. It's about lobbyists, basically. Must have been getting to the FDA in, in their ear. And at that point, it's not going to be able to be banned from getting compounded right now. So if I understand this correctly. Uh, there is the the main factor, uh, the, the main product who has the patent on it. Yep. And when they have a shortage, um, other pharmacies are allowed to make a derivative of that, yep. right? A white label yep. of that product and send it out there. And now they get to continue to do that, even though the product may come back in um, for delivery. So they're, they're supposed to quit when the shortage ends. Right. So when the supplier's like, all right. But this stance just reverses this now. By the so FDA. they do get to continue, even though. Okay, continue. so that's I do understand it correctly. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. it's great for the pharmacies, and also it's the. Great. Uh, it's, it's not only great for the pharmacies; it's great for the patients, because majority yeah. of those compounded versions 
I mean, they're like one third of the cost of what you would com get a commercial product for. That's got to be irritating to the uh, the people that got the patent. Yeah, but and think the, about it. If it's on the shortage list, they're selling it hand over fist. I know. I know. I, also, I know they're missing out on money. The fact that it's, it's, yeah. yeah. Those kind of companies and, and what they've done through the decades, it's like, I'm all right with it. I'm all right that the other people are making some of their finance and the, fan, the people that are using it. Um, somebody came up to me today and talked to me about uh, those products, those type of products that will get you that extra weight loss. Um, and he said that uh, he was going to just uh, jump right onto that. What's your take on someone just going from ground zero to getting right on there? I guess it depends on the person too, right? I mean, if it's a person that been obese or overweight and at that point it's pretty much tried everything then this might be a good option for them you know i mean there's different people out there that just want to jump on it because of the hype and they're just looking for you know some short-term weight loss effect and they'll want to jump on it you know i mean i was talking to dave palumbo uh, you know at olympia and he's a big advocate of ours and sends a lot of people our way and he has there's some bodybuilders around it right they're utilizing it for for fat loss and me and him were talking about that because, you know, people are starting to come out there and, oh, well, you're going to lose muscle by taking this drug. And if you don't eat, of course, you're going to lose muscle either way. So, I mean, that was just one discussion we had. But I, I think if, if, it, if it's the right person, right scenario, then, yes, I think it's a good option. But do I think that they should be doing all of our essentials? And I always bring this up. I always think that we should be into this because I don't want anybody thinking that, oh, let's just go to the drug first. I think we should talk about, you know, eating correctly, exercising, sleeping, drinking water. Like I said, all those core things. But at that point, if you're doing these things or you're working your way towards doing the, all these things, I guess, working one thing at a time, then I think it would be a good option for some people, especially if you have a BMI over 30. That's where it, what it's, <clears throat> it's supposed to be prescribed to people that are BMI over 30, that are obese and overweight. And at that point, there's no other option for them. Or some that might have cardiovascular issues that can't use stimulants. I think that might be an option, but I think if it's five, 10, 15 pounds, maybe AOD might be another good one for them instead of taking the GLP one. But I guess it's a lot of factors, right? Like, or is this a 22 year old male that's 20 pounds overweight, no other health issues, or is it a 40 year old guy that has cardiovascular disease, um, is morbidly obese, and, you know, it has no other way, I guess, of losing weight, but use this and some good exercise and um, nutrition. So it's really a case by case scenario, I think. Um, yeah, I was, yeah, I, I was curious about that too, because I'm always going to be the guy that says that you should probably start a regimen first. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and this guy couldn't be much more than 28, 29 years old. And he wasn't 30%. He's maybe, you know, I'm not really sure what his body fat was, but he wasn't an obese guy. Um, and I just kind of said to him, I said, why don't, why don't you try to diet for a bit and just eat correctly and work out correctly? And then, you know, give that eight weeks and then step to the next level. And then, and then you get all these extra helps as you go. You can not just do that. You can do some peptides as you continue forward on your journey. Um, maybe your T levels aren't where they're supposed to be. So maybe check on that as well. But it was interesting from a, a guy that I, I assume played probably sports because he was about my size, you know, um, but much, much younger. Um, but it was interesting how little he knew on how the body worked. Because I, I asked him, I said, well, so you're saying you're going to start fasting. You're going to do all those kind of things. You're going to start doing two hours. Mm -hmm. Are you hardwired? Me or not, and he's back. Let me know. Sorry, you guys I, are good I, I again. Apologize. Yeah, we got fuzzy for a second. No, don't be, don't be, brother. We know how it is down there. Don't worry about that. 
Um, so he, he has options, right? This is a guy that's never done anything. Mm -hmm. He's been training like two weeks here um, in town from South Africa. I'm like, maybe, maybe start just slowly and, and let your body adapt and then build that regimen. I agree. I definitely agree with what you're saying. I mean, you should definitely do these things first. And then if you think something else is wrong, blood work might be the key. And then kind of going down that path. But I think that, yeah, you're right. I mean, the guy should get a good regimen going all the way around before maybe jumping right into this, especially some a 28 year old, right? Their body can jump pretty quick, I think, and adapt pretty quick and move. Right. I just, for anybody out there, I think they, they think, uh, I don't know, I could be wrong, but it seems a lot of conversations I had over the weekend was just start and go. But I'm sitting there going, well, you got options now. You got so many options now with HRT and Titan Medical. They give you so many things that you can do that you can just start with the Hercules potion. You can start with just some stuff after you get your blood work and then make those decisions as you continue forward, but still build up the base stuff, the nutrition, the sleep, the training, the regimen about it, instead of depending solely on something else. Cause I don't want them to sit there and go, I've been doing this for six months and nothing's happened. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. but you didn't change at all. You didn't. You right. didn't take the benefit, right? That Big Jahan is handing you. You're you're handing them this this incredible tool to no matter how bad their body is, how it's not working with them, that you're there to help them get it working well. How do you how do you talk to these people that are coming over just going? I, I don't want to change my lifestyle. I just want to do this. I tell them that that's the wrong way. And then you're going to set your own, you're going to set yourself up for failure. You need to take a GLP one, you're going to lose the weight and then nothing's going to change. You're going to gain it all the way back. And do you want to go through that process again? Right. Instead of yeah. really utilizing it, even if you haven't utilized it, you know, before you start taking the tool, when you start using the tool, that's when you really can start changing things because you won't be as hungry. You can definitely pick different food sources or eat smaller portions. And this will help you do that. And I think that's the biggest thing. And that's, I mean, that's the time lifestyle is all about a healthy lifestyle. It's not about taking medications to get you the result. The medications are supposed to be tools to help you. They're supposed to expedite results or to optimize things that might be deficient. So at that point, like, you know, if we're giving you these tools, utilize these tools to the best of your ability. And if you want the best result, that's why I tell people, if you want the best result, then you do these things. If you don't want the best result, and you're expecting the best result, you're not going to get it unless you do these things. So it's important. And I tell them like, you know, because some people are, are, they're really just, they, I don't know if they're just uneducated, they don't care, whatever the, the excuses or it, it, the situation, I guess, you know, they got to be able to change some things. So it's, it might be a shock if you're drinking four Cokes a day, eat McDonald's three times a day. You know, this is the, this is the whole week, right? And then what do I do to stop eating all the McDonald's and cook? Start tearing down, right? And, and start weaning yourself off. It's kind of what it is. It's like it's getting off like a drug. It really is. That stuff is like drugs. It will addict you to a certain extent. I mean, not I'm going to go rob my mom for her purse, but to the point where you might be like craving this stuff. Like that's how it works. You know, people get cravings and then they go after it and something – that's in a routine. Yeah. If you do this every single day, your body gets used to it. You get in the routine. Of it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like a perfect example. Like I've gotten to bad routines on my own. Man. Like eating donuts every day. If I eat a donut every day, I'm getting the routine of eating a donut every day. I, I shouldn't do that. I need to, to say, all right, this is not going to be good for me, and put it aside, and start somewhere else. I mean. There's so many ways you can start. And like I said, it might be eating correctly. It might be starting to exercise now. Like, you know, you went once a week, twice a week, and you start really gaining that momentum. But I know this, when you start doing these right things, and if you do need the therapies, that's great. But if you start doing the right things, you're going to get some sort of result, some sort of good result. I don't care. Right. I don't care if your hormones are messed up or whatever it is. You might not get the optimal result, but you will get a good result. And if you have all the things working like they should, you'll get an even better result. And what that will do is, is that will motivate you even more because people get motivated by seeing themselves or seeing results. 
right? Whether it's investing in a stock or something they believe in because they see it moving up time after time after time, or they see their body changing time after time after time. I've seen a, a ton of people, um, you know, just at that point, like get motivated because they've lost 20, 30. Now what's the next goal? 50, 60 and start accomplishing those goals or building muscle or building the, the body or physique that they want to as well. When you start seeing those cuts and you start seeing that added muscle, you start seeing maybe that six pack come in or those lines come on the side. Yeah. You start getting motivated. You're like, Oh damn, like I got it. I'm going to keep doing this. Cause you know what? One, you're getting a dopamine effect, right? Just, just seeing yourself and people saying, man, like you look really good. What are you doing? That's a compliment to somebody. People be like, oh, no, you know? So at that point, I think that's that's really the way to go and get motivated and start doing these things. I, I couldn't agree with you any more than that because the, the thing I said to this kid was that it's it's not just the body that starts to change, but it's your mindset. And obviously, it's not the it's not the protocol that you're on. It, it's your actions. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the training, the eating and the protocol that you're on, it changes who you are mentally and you become this motivational person like you're talking about. And then you create this whole new habits and you're a different person. And I, I just think that's the coolest thing to see the, the individuals. And I met so many people this weekend that were there, um, you know, waiting to come up and talk and you saying how they dropped 150 pounds and i would never have assumed they were heavy because they looked great and they looked like and i'm like great job man there was a guy i met that was 200 pounds down couldn't be more than his mid-20s and uh so we talked about peptides uh, going over titan medical for his skin because he's such a youngster too that if this is the time to do it now that he lost that weight take care of that skin and, and the things that uh that could still be an issue and stuff but just yeah. dropping 200 pounds um doing it properly is, is it was great and the mindset of these guys are great it's amazing definitely is amazing i don't know how many people came up to us at the booth but there was quite a few that i talked to personally like patients so super happy to hear that i love hearing feedback like that and love hearing about people's journeys especially ones like that because that's motivating itself even for somebody to post up on their page, like, hey, listen, I lost 100, 150 pounds. And then showing that result too to somebody, that gets people motivated and saying, listen, they can do it, I can do it too. It shows them the way. I mean, it's always harder for the first person to do it. But once the first person does it, people think, oh, it's been done. Now I can do better. And this happens in everything. World records, dunk contests, home run derby, like anything you do, like – to set that standard and set that bar, that bar is set. And now people are aiming to go past that bar. So I think, I think that's, it's, it's truly helpful for people out there, whether it's in your network or somebody that's coming across your page or whatever it may be. I think it's, it's awesome. They're getting hit. Yeah. This isn't ours, right? I don't think so, right? Mike? Oh, wow. Well. Let's start this. I mean, do you want to start over here? What's going on? Oh, man. Yeah, so um, I guess Mike's lagging here. I don't know. Am I still live on here? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, well, I guess there was some talk about melatonin. There was one that says, Mike, at 47, what can I do about golf elbow that's only showing up during the curls? So at that point, what you can do is, is BPC-157 and TB-500. They're healing peptides, and these peptides would be great for golf elbow, tennis elbow. 
Oh, cool. Mike is back. <laughs> I'm like, where did Mike go? No, keep going, kid. Sure. So some guy asked, he was 47 years old, Mike, and wanted to ask what he could do for golf elbow. And I told him, I said, BBC 157, TB 500, great for golf elbow, tennis elbow, any acute or chronic injuries, muscle tendons, ligaments, anything as far as that goes, take away inflammation. This will definitely help with any of those aspects. But golf elbow and tennis elbow, man, I don't know how many times yeah. that's helped me and helped other people get rid of this. So at that point, um, you know, that's a good one. And there's no blood work that's needed for it. All you guys have to do is call or text 727 389 3220 nationwide service for all you guys. Give Johnny some more questions. I love that one, Johnny. Yeah. I get a lot of those. Yes. I know because a lot of people get it. And you know what? It's like twisting your wrist on they were someone. Asking about the tennis that. elbow and shoulders. <laughs> Yeah, it really does. It's 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 crazy how many people get it. Uh, all right, a skeletal muscle mass grows. How often should you take blood work? So we say every three to six months. That would probably be the recommendation of what it should be. Now, if there's something off in your blood work, then maybe you want to be, might retest it after 30 days. It just depends what is up with the blood work, right? And how you know OCD or really you want to check out be precautionary. And like I said. Yeah. Three months, things can change. Six months, things can change. So within three to six months, I would say that's a good way to judge how often you should get it. And getting a full in-depth test, not just one or two different tests, seeing a whole different um, panel of basically what's going on inside the body. Hey, I got a question, a couple of questions. Uh, when you do your blood work, is a guy not supposed to have sex a couple of days before the uh, procedure, uh, the blood work? Is so, there something about food as well the day before even? Yeah. So basically this. Um, all right. If you have PSA problems, prostate problems, right? And usually as you get older, you, that's when the problems start coming. You usually don't see them like a 20-year-old guy or whatever it may be. But, you know, I'm not going to say it hasn't happened. But if you have prostate issues, then you're going to want to stay from, you know, stay away from ejaculating, whether it's sex or self, um, for at least, you know, 24 to 48 hours. That's what they say, because that can enlarge the prostate. And if the PSA comes back high on a blood test, like even through us, then we're going to want to send you to a specialist to make sure that they assess you, check you, and that you're okay to get on treatment. So that that's what it would be. Food-wise and stuff like that. So for fasting blood levels, as far as cholesterol go and fasting glucose levels, sugar levels, you're not going to want to eat you know 12 hours you know, prior to the blood testing and you can adjust that however you want to timing wise, whenever you want to go, whether it's eight o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning or three o'clock in the afternoon. That is the rule of thumb, 12 hours. Can you drink water? Or can you drink coffee? They say that that's okay to drink. Um, but if you eat anything, then that could skew the cholesterol testing and that could skew your fasting glucose level too as well. So these are just right. is there is something for, also about water intake. Yes, for sure. So water intake is going to be key, especially 24 to 48 hours before your blood test. You're going to want to make sure that you're really, really hydrated to go into this blood test. The reason why is because a lot of people go in without drinking water and a lot of people don't drink the right amount of water each day. So if you're not drinking the right amount of water each day and you go into a blood test, you could look like you're dehydrated, which can directly affect your kidney levels and what they look like, your bun, your creatinine, your EGFR. These three things could be affected by you not drinking enough water and being dehydrated when you go in. It can make a world of difference. I've seen a world of difference in, in results from somebody that did not drink water and hasn't drank water a lot. And so they were drinking a half a gallon, you know, the day before the test. Big difference in kidney levels and function all the way through. through. That's interesting because I know the creatinine in those levels can already be off a bit because of just training and being a, an elite athlete so that would be the and next protein thing. intake right go for don't it. train hard the day before you do the blood test because you have the muscle breakdown and that's going to cause those levels to be affected so i would not be training the day hard anyway i wouldn't go like you know balls to the wall like i'm putting everything into it that day because it can affect those levels and some providers when they start seeing your levels go like that they're going to have an issue with it i know some doctors they will say, well, it's because he's an athlete. 
All right. Well, that's fine. I can understand it on maybe one blood test. But if that comes back low, like if it comes back below a 59, then we need to look at it again in 30 days. And we need to assess like, hey, listen, what does it look like without you training the day before, with, with you getting proper water? Because I see a lot of people in chronic kidney disease numbers. And at that point, they're not scared about it because the provider is telling, well, it's because you're an athlete. You're going to have different numbers. This could be a little bit lower than somebody else. But I'm telling you, you don't want your numbers there. I know plenty of people that have great numbers that are machines. I mean, you know, I mean, so at that point, like, don't put that at risk because it's hard. Like I said, liver functions, I'm really not that scared of. I could say glutathione, those liver functions are damaged and it kind of goes back. Kidney levels are a lot harder to, to rejuvenate or revitalize per se. Can we keep going on that for one more second? Just uh, yeah. talk about, I, I know that if you carry a lot of mass, muscle mass, that also makes the creatins and all that higher. Is that correct? Or am it I could. completely wrong? It definitely could for sure. hundred percent. But I, I mean, I, but is that true for everybody? I don't know because everybody's different and everybody's intaking different things. And I see, you know, some people where they're mass monsters and they look great on the inside. I see some mass monsters that look bad on the inside. So I, can I say it's just directly towards the kidney and that would be affected by you just gaining a whole bunch of muscle or carrying it? No, but I mean, maybe some guy that's five, six and that's 270 pounds shouldn't be carrying around that much weight. And that could directly affect the creatinine and kidney functions too, as well. And, you know, there's just so much, there's so many different thing variables, Mike, that I, you really have to, it's a person by person scenario. I mean, you couldn't even say that for everybody out there because I know a million people that train hard, have sex before the, the, the blood test, you know, like me or something. And I mean, me, like somebody that's hardcore. I, I don't even consider myself hardcore. I train hard, but I'm not hardcore. Hardcore to me is like, you're in there for two hours. I wouldn't recommend doing that, but they're just balls to the wall, just beating themselves into the oblivion every single day and, and come out and, and man, it looks, looks better than mine. So I'm like, man, I'm like, you know, what, what can I really say about this person? I can't say, well, you're training hard. You're, you have, you have this weight on you and your kidney functions look great. And then they should look bad, you know? So I think it's really with the blood and it's really with the genetics, you know, to somebody to, to a certain degree too, as well. You know, I think that does play a, a certain role. And then I think that, you know, obviously how you're taking care of yourself, how you're eating, you know, what you're putting in your body. I think this directly affects some of the different things too, like kidneys. Because you have power lifters. I was talking, talking to Ed Cohen, right? And he was telling me, he was like, you know, because I had to take a lot of NSAIDs. You know, as a power lifter, I, I was beat up, inflammation. And things like this could directly affect kidneys too as well. And a lot of people that have, you know, went to, to almost renal failure by, by taking a lot of NSAIDs. You know, so different things affect different people, but you got to watch out for certain things because they're going to directly affect your vital organs like that. And at that point, damaging them. And, you know, let's say you have high blood pressure, you're taking NSAIDs, you have diabetes type two, your kidneys are going to be screwed after a, a, a little period of time, maybe a long period of time. Just really depends on how, how much they're getting beat down. But majority of things, those will beat down. And a lot of people don't know they even have these things going on. It, it's true too that you can read the blood work and actually kind of tell the person, "Hey, you're overtraining. You're 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 doing too much, and the inflammation is showing up on the blood test." Can you go into that just for a second? Yeah, I mean, listen, we can run a whole bunch of different skew of tests too, as well, to, to show muscle breakdown too, as well, and like see reactive proteins in the body and such like that. So we can go really in depth for somebody to tell them, "Hey, listen." Are you really doing the right thing for yourself right now or are you just doing too much right because if you are doing too much you might need to back off that's the whole thing about this is getting you're getting the warning flags before you hit red and you can listen to those warning flags you can't or you don't or you don't want to whatever it is but that's what they're there for and that's what we're doing this for is they say listen we really want to step it up or you're really hitting it really hard or maybe you're not, but we really want to check and see where it's at and how hard you're really hitting it. And is this good for you? Is this sustainable or is this not sustainable? Johnny, Johnny, what do you got for Jeffrey? All right. Hi. Can you talk about your skin supplements? I'm pushing 40. All right. So uh, GHKCU would probably be the best, uh, like, skin supplement i would say because it's a collagen based amino acid or not a collagen based peptide excuse me um and at that point it they talk about remodeling resurfacing like i was talking to somebody at olympia about it too they 
They had, you know, cystic acne on their face and scarring from the cystic acne. And, you know, they were going to a lot of the biohackers and the biohackers were telling them it starts in the gut, which I believe to certain certain circumstances that the gut is important and it, it actually directs a lot of different things. But at that point, like when you have a clean liver and your cystic acne is not going away, what do you do? You know, because then it's not the liver. If you got the liver in perfect harmony and it's working perfectly and it's in reference range, then what's going on? And that's where GHKCU, I think, can really help patients because of the remodeling, the resurfacing that it could possibly do to the skin and smoothing out the skin and some of those bad areas, which it has. Now, the other portion of this is getting rid of the acne, right? Or holding it back. And this person's not talking about acne on here, but at that point, a lot of people do deal with acne or having acne problems. And that's something you gotta start diving deeper into too as well. Is it a hormonal issue or an imbalance? that's causing the acne, um, you know, is it something possibly in a bacterial infection in the bloodstream that they usually prescribe doxycycline for? Monohydrate, by the way, because there's two doxies. You know, and what can you do to combat these different things? And we also have an acne protocol that we have, you know, we have basically, uh, we have an antibiotic clear pad that you can use during the day on these affected areas. And then we have a wash that you can utilize in the shower or bathing purposes. And this will slow down and get rid of the acne too as well. So if you're a guy or a girl and you have acne issues, this might be the way. If it gets really bad, I know I've been on Accutane a long, long time ago and I've talked to people about this and this is something that I would use as the last case scenario because of possible liver toxicity too as well but it does work very well. Um, it's something that we don't prescribe, but if that is need for somebody that has really, really bad acne, that's checked all these different things and all these boxes, I think that might be a way to go for some people too. I love it. The old peptides for the skin. Oh yeah. And we want to peptides for the connective tissue too, the greatest well, things. The other thing too, I'm sorry about that, would be no, like CJC no. or, or Tessamorelin because they have anti-aging effects too and help with elasticity and skin hair and nails. So, I mean, honestly, you could combine those two and really get some really good results and keep those results and slow down the, the, the aging clock. I think that's what we all want to do. We all want to slow down the aging clock. I mean, nobody wants to get old because getting old sucks. It doesn't suck for everybody because some people age gracefully, right? <clears throat> Michael, you want to be able to keep but, training, keep doing your thing, right? <laughs> but, exactly. But, you know, I mean, you see some of these, some 70 year olds or 80 year olds, and they're still doing pull ups. You see some 80 year olds and they're in bed dying away. So, really, which one do you want to be? And how are you going to take care of yourself so you can be that long lasting person? Yeah, I saw some freaks this weekend. Um, for real. Guy found, uh, came up and. Yeah. I was hearing stories, but he's 60, 67 year old. Yeah. 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 Man, 67 years old. I, I would have bet my house maybe, maybe 40. Look, just, I mean, solid, solid. Yeah. So just, it's just cool to see these uh, phenomenons walking around at the expo, doing what they do and showing what's you know possible. What? We should have brought out Iris. Iris is a big Titan advocate. She's 80 years old. She's in the movie Aging Evolution that you're in, right? Because I met that guy that produced that movie this weekend in Olympia. And yeah, he's kind of showing me. He's like, oh, Iris talks about you guys. And Iris is 80, and she's still doing pull-ups. That was my example I was just talking about here earlier. It's just amazing, man, you know, because, like I said, I hope I'm able to do pull-ups like that at 80, do 8 to 10 pull-ups at 80 years old. I'm like, wow, that, that's oh, phenomenal. Granny. Yeah, yeah, Granny Guns too. How old is she? She's sixty-five. She's 65. got to be her, Yeah, she's got to be late 60s, 70s, right? Yeah. So no, sixty-five. Sixty-five. Okay. Yeah. Which is young nowadays young. compared right. to a lot of these people. Oh, for sure. Um, Frank Zane's so, eighty. Is that that correct? Yeah. Uh, Arnold was there this morning with us. This says sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. Yeah. Yeah, it's in that range, but she's still doing it, and she raises huskies. So I'm a fan. Oh yeah, yeah. I know you got a soft spot for that. Hundred <laughs> percent. 
All right. Recommendation recommendations for underweight guy in his thirties. Well, you don't hear too much of this. I don't hear a lot of problems like this. Very far and few between anymore. But if you're underweight and you're a guy in his thirties and you want to gain some lean muscle and start gaining some weight here, one, I would do a blood test. I would see where your levels are at, right? What's going on here? Maybe you're not able to gain muscle because you have low or deficient testosterone levels. If that's not the case and we get the blood work back and everything looks great, then at that point, I would probably recommend MK677 for you because at that point, you're going to need to have some more calories and make sure you're training hard. And by doing this, it should definitely help you stack on some more weight than what you want. And if you're doing the right things like drinking water and you're eating properly and you're getting some sleep, I think you're going to be well on your way to be able to gain some lean body mass and some good weight on that 30 year old body that you have. I mean, that's, that's the go-to. If somebody asked me, Hey, listen, John, what should I do to gain lean muscle mass? And I could be disciplined on doing it. Then MK677 is going to be the way to go. And if you're underweight and you're not worried about gaining weight, I like, like Peter, Peter's like the mindset, like his coach told him, like, just eat anything, eat anything. And I get the mindset of just eat anything. Cause he's got to get the calories down to gain the weight. But at that point, like, don't dirty bulk the whole thing. Like, if you need to get some of those meals in there once in a while, then do it. But try to stay disciplined to a certain extent, but not to the not to the extent where you're not going to get the calories into. Well, I guess if you got to cheat and you're underweight like that, I mean, I guess you can do it. I don't know. What do you think about that, Mike? I, I think I got two things. One is that you said this is something you don't hear a lot of. I get a lot of this, uh, the guy that just really? automatically goes, uh, I'm a hard gainer. They, they always go, I'm a hard gainer. Yeah. Um, and so, but I also find out after a conversation with all of them, what they think they're eating a lot of isn't, you know, oh, I, I, eat, I eat all the time. No, I don't. You eat twice a day and they're big meals, but it's not the calorie intake that we're speaking of. So, right, right. I love the idea that you sit there, what you just said, though, because on both aspects, uh, the hard gainer could have a problem with his testosterone. And again, the, the fat guy might have a problem with his test. Anybody can have a problem with that. And you don't know until you do the blood test. So it's a great point that you made. Again, just go get the blood work done so you know what's going on. And then from that, then make the calories correct. Um and hopefully, hopefully there's nothing wrong with the blood work in that aspect. But I, I think also like what John said, also on your recovery of your sleep. Because like, let's say you're a hard gainer, but your testosterone's okay. But you're also only sleeping four or five hours. So there's another issue that we have. And so like you said, the MK. Go help that sleep, help eat. I mean, that's going to raise your IGF-1 levels to, so you can recharge, you can repair easier, quicker. I mean, it's it's the go-to for somebody that tells me that I'm underweight and I need to gain, right? And, I, you know, I have some sort of discipline because, you know, I mean, even if you're, let's say you're undisciplined, you're not going to drink a lot of water, you're going to eat a whole bunch of garbage, you're going to gain weight. So if you're just looking to gain weight, and then I guess you could do it either way, but I would do it the right way to a certain extent. If you need to get some calories in, high-level days, then fine, do it. You know, but um, you know, try to stick to the programs. Try to try to do it the right way as much as you possibly can, and get it done, man. Because I know a lot of guys are in this boat, right? And they, you're right, they don't eat enough. They never eat enough, and they think they do. Like, yeah, I eat all day. I'm like, what do you eat all day? <laughs> and then I start counting the calories up, and I'm like, man, you barely got 1,500 calories, and you say you eat all day. <laughs> yeah, you could never I mean, be a eat, man. Right, right? Unless you eat McDonald's, I'm like. Ugh, yeah, it's not, it's not what we want you to do. If you Definitely. know, just take your body weight. That's your protein intake. Uh, double the carbohydrates and make sure you got at least 100 grams of fat in there. And, and there's your starting base for your uh, nutrition. But again, you're wasting so much valuable time not knowing what's going on inside. And that's for anybody that's here. If, if you if you don't know what's going on inside, you're wasting time because you could be putting in such diligent work and get nothing from it because the inside's not working correct. So true. Johnny, you're killing these, baby. I love it. Yeah. Um, 
the best herbal testosterone booster. I really don't know the best herbal testosterone booster. I know they said Ashawanga, but at that point I've seen through blood testing that it does lower cortisol levels. I see some two testings now. I see somebody else taking it and they, they tested for cortisol. The cortisol was low in two people so far. So I'm going to keep running this on some people that are taking so Ashawanga. So it's actually... By lowering the cortisol, it raises the testosterone, I guess, then, because cortisol is going to break down the muscle. Yeah. So that's the idea of what the product actually does. In a, it, in a, in a reverse way, it instead of bumping your testosterone, it just lowers the cortisol, which should allow you to do this. But you really don't want to play with all the hormones like that. Definitely not. Definitely not. What about Yohimbi? Yohimbi, and we do. I mean, I put that in ECA Ultras. I don't have no problems with Yohimbi at all, as far as that goes. Uh, Yohimbi has been a really, really good one, but I don't know about as far as boosting testosterone. I don't see anybody that's on ECA Ultras and stuff like that where the testosterone actually getting boosted um, from where they were at. I've seen some people take it because some people, you know, they don't want to go on hormones. So, like, I don't care. Like, I'll just like mask it and, and do what I need to do. And I want weight loss. So they take ECA Ultras or whatever it may be. And, and then they finally get on testosterone later on. But at that point, like, you know, to lower cortisol is good because you want high cortisol levels. But to have low cortisol, real low cortisol is no good either. So it's all about, like I said, harmonic balance and getting those things kind of within range or around a good optimal range. So, you know, it just, that's something you need to blood test, not just it. Comes back to that nutrition again, also, just real quick. Just because you find out that the brain works off of uh, different fats, sure. um, cholesterol. So sure. it, it's interesting to find out the blood work to find out to make sure that your your levels are good. Because yep. I know a lot of people will go to ground zero when it comes to the fats. Right. But they stay there all year. Instead of maybe just a portion of time while they're dieting, they stay there all year. When they don't realize those fats are actually good for you. Um, a certain level of cortisol is good for you. A, a good um, amount of a, a decent amount of inflammation after workouts is actually good for your body. Absolutely. Where everybody's like, no, I want none of this. I want none of that. It's right. like, okay, that's not how the body really functions. Right. So, um, best place to buy peptides for safety BPC 157, Tight Medical Center. Time Medical Center services nationwide. We have BBC 157, TB500, AOD, CJC, IPA, and a lot more different peptides for you guys. All comes from the U.S. licensed pharmacy. You'll see a medical provider beforehand. Everything will be monitored. And at that point, you will have us for your support, anything that you need. So if you guys want to get this, 727-389-3220. All you have to do is do the new patient paperwork, see the medical provider via telemedicine, and you're good to go to order. All right. Can I lose my weight without changing my diet, but just doing exercise? So <laughs> the whole point is to change the diet, right? I mean, change the diet, change the weight. Obviously, whatever you're doing right now is not working because you could get a right diet. And I think you could still be lean, you know, to a certain extent, right? But if you're getting more fatter per se, or things aren't going the right way for you. And I think this is something you need to look at with exercise because the old saying is you can't outrun a good diet or a bad diet. Is that what it is? You can't outrun a bad diet. You can't outwork a bad diet. What do you think, Mike? I know what you're going to say. I, I think, I think stay with it. I think he's got the right attitude. I think he's, uh, I, I think keep it in the way you're doing yeah. We'll check back in in six months and, and see how that's going for you, man. All the very best to you. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be, I don't think it's going to be a good thing for sure. Johnny, come on, man. That's not positive thing. That's not, I want to know what this guy's diet or this woman's diet is. Will you let us know how your diet is right now? Cause saying you don't want to change it. Maybe you're, maybe you're a chicken and broccoli person. I don't know. Um, I don't know if, the, if it's that or you're, Chick-fil-A and pizza. So yeah. I'd love yeah, to hear I'm, that's what I'm saying, man. If you were eating broccoli and chicken, you you would lose weight. You would probably be pretty lean. I uh I got a I gotta tell a story just because I had this happen to me once when I was 
really still like focused on personal training in person. And I was getting a lot of celebrities. And so uh, I was working with a couple of huge names. And so their co-stars wanted to work with us as well. And so I went on set, you know, and I'm sitting there and, and it's maybe three minutes in the dressing room. Uh, so, hey, Mike, this is this is my idea. I'm going to have you guys train me. We're going to kick ass. We're going to do this. But I'm not going to eat any different than I already eat. I'm going to stay how I'm eating. I like my pasta. I like my uh, um, and the, uh, uh, the cream sauce and, and my pizzas and my JoJo's. And you guys know what JoJo's are? <laughs> so I go... That is awesome, awesome, awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll recommend somebody that could probably help train you. And I was out of there. I was right. like, I don't, I don't understand the, con I don't understand the concept. And I said that to the kid today. Sorry for taking so long on this, but I jump back to the kid I talked to this morning. If nobody knows, I was approached by somebody that said they're going to start some, um, some Still things, and, and not just medication, but other things as well. Well. Uh, and he's been in the gym for two weeks now for the first time in a decade. And, and he's going to start eating right. And I said to him, I said, you're going from ground zero to 100. Wouldn't you just do one thing at a time and change it and change it and change it? And he goes, well, you know, he kept, you could see it just going in one ear out the other. It's an age thing too, or a life thing. And I'm like, you're not grasping anything I'm saying to you right now. You're just going, okay, but if I can't do all 10, can I do five? I'm like, you're not listening to this. You got to change how you're thinking about this concept. If you think that you can keep eating the way you're eating, which isn't good at your younger stage, and you can continue this into your older stage when we all coast through, it just doesn't work that way. Mm-hmm. So just going back to this, I'm curious about this, but for everybody out there, man, we got to make sure that we're doing things right when you're younger so you can keep doing it when you're older. That's right. And I don't mind that you get mad at yourself that you're not where you want to be. I like that. I like the chip on the shoulder. I like that you're angry and you get up and go, I've had enough. You know, it's time to get going. It's like Johnny said, give a call over to Titan Medical. Talk to somebody there. Get going on your protocol that will help you get there, but make sure you got the blood work so you understand what's going on. And then talk to his experts. Talk to the people over there that will talk to you about your blood work and what's going on. Definitely here to help people, man, for sure. And people need help these days, especially with weight loss and to get healthy. And I said, it was over, it's over 70% obese and overweight individuals. It's overweight is 70%. 40% of that is obese. That's, that's, I mean, that's crazy when you start. Did you hear the numbers that. though for other places? Cause in, I, I'll in, pull the numbers from Europe. China, but Europe, I mean, Europe's Japan. a lot less. I mean, it's, it's low. It was Japan or uh, China was 2%. The UK is 28% and America is over 50%. That is nuts. But I love the fact of, of Japan or China. It is such a low percentage. It, less than four percent. Where China or Japan? Japan. What, what's the population of Japan? Isn't it 1.8 billion? China has the most. Japan's 125 million. 125. Yeah. And one four billion. Okay, so, so I just go. It's so cool that they're at two less than four yeah. percent. No, for sure. Why wouldn't Why wouldn't we here in America just go? Gosh darn it, we're not doing this right. I know, and that honestly, that that's where it needs to be. Where we need to get somebody that's in there that is looking at our food. And I know we were talking about that before. I think that's really really important. I think that's that's one of the most important issues. I think that one of you know, outside of a couple other ones, that is in the top four, top five issues to deal with here in the United States. One is our food sources and what we're eating. I think this is, this is crazy because a lot of people eat all these processed foods or sugary foods because there's no other options. There's literally no other options usually when you go out. Like I was just 
thinking about the airport and everything that I was doing, like just traveling back. There's not one, there wasn't one healthy option for me to eat on the way back. Like there was I no Chick-fil-A. Like <laughs> First of Easy. all, it was Sunday, Mike. Was Sunday. It was Sunday. It was Sunday. Two, I don't like Chick-fil-A. It makes me sick. So at that point, you, Cherise, Peter, Mona, Titan, all Titan. eat it. But me, I can't eat it. Even if I wanted to eat it, I couldn't eat it. So at that point, yeah, yeah, it was just crazy. But that's, that's the way it is. So I, I think, honestly, I think that's a very important thing, that if uh, somebody came in and really did overlook our food like they're supposed to, like the USDA or anybody else, is supposed to really look over food, then I think we'd be a lot healthier as far as the country. It would take out a lot of different the problems as far as obesity and being overweight and the health issues that a lot of people have, whether it's cancer, whatever. Cancer is an all time high in almost every category, every category. I mean, that's a damn shame, man. It means, I mean, I don't know. Um, so yeah, that goes right, right along with health I mean, eating properly. And um, I think that's a, a big proponent is what we put in our body. We are what we eat, right? So we are what we eat, yeah. Yeah. I'm Here we go. This is, a, this is an important one because I think for a guy, uh, sure. you want to make sure that that tool is working and you want to make sure it's working all the time. Yes. No matter what age you get to. So what would you recommend for mild ED? Now, what would mild ED be? Is that you not get an erection every so often or is that you get an erection and going down? Because, you know, I mean, or is that a soft erection? I guess. I mean, there's there's a couple different ways you could go. Now, first off, Skinner, I would definitely do a blood test. Or if you're having some sort of stress or something like that that may be causing this, because listen, stress can cause ED. It could be a not a physical issue. It could be a, a mental issue. Whether one, you might be fighting with your partner, don't want to be with your partner, something's happened. Two, there could be other something in your life that's going on that's super stressing out. You might get fired from my job. Uh, this is wrong, whatever, and you just keep you know, dwelling on that subject. Um, so you get one, and it goes down. So you obtain a erection. This happens to a lot of guys. So don't don't be embarrassed at all. So at this point, it goes up, starts coming down. Right. This is definitely something you want to start checking with blood work. A free and total testosterone level will tell you, hey, listen, what's going on? I am going through something personal. So this could this could be it too. So other side of you going through something personal. I would definitely check the free and total testosterone just to see where it's at. Do the full blood test. In case something's wrong, you can fix it. After you go through the personal situation, you can kind of see where you are too as well. But if you correlate both of them, you can say, all right, well, I think it's the personal situation. And I had the blood test and now I have good levels. So I know it's the personal situation. Or damn, I got the blood levels back and it might not be the personal situation, it might be what's going on here on paper. And then you, you can make an educated decision about what you want to do. That's what the blood work's there to do. It's to confirm one way or the other, maybe what you should do, right? Maybe there's an option on there. Maybe something can help where you can have erections. Because I'll be honest with you, I'm on testosterone replacement therapy. I'm not saying you need it, but at that point, I've been out for 13 years. I don't need Viagra, I don't need Cialis. And I'm telling you what, I've been in some of the most stressful situations I think that a lot of humans haven't been in to a certain extent. I haven't had a gun to my head, thank God. But at that point, you know, business-wise and everything else, it's, it's been some, some seriously stressful things um, and other things too, you know, like my dad having cancer, dog dying, all these different things can affect you mentally and physically. Says John, went to your site. I'm in Palm Beach. Can I come over and get blood work and peptide therapy, bum, shoulder, and elbow, same day? Um, so you can get blood work right here in the office, or I can send you in Palm Beach, not a problem. Peptide therapy, all you have to do is just see the provider. Um, and at that point, it's going to come from a U.S. licensed pharmacy. I don't hold any peptides here or any other medications. We're not the pharmacy. We don't get it from China and ship out peptides directly to patients. That all comes from a U.S. licensed pharmacy prescribed in your name so you can utilize it. Um, but you can get blood work here. You can see the provider here. Or you can do it via telemedicine. We can send you in. Not a problem. And you can get these things very quickly, too, as well. So uh, it doesn't have to be an office. You'll get it in the next couple of days after you see the provider. It should be very simple, very easy, very fast. 
Can you go over real quick before the next one? Uh, sure. Somebody asked earlier, uh, where can I get peptides and stuff like that? And you gave a great answer. Can you tell them why you wouldn't want to take it off a website? I, I know that this shouldn't have to be said, but again, not everybody knows. Not everybody understands the difference between that you can just go off a website. Sure. Compare. So. If you go on uh, the web and you type in BPC-157, there could be a hundred different sites that pop up. And you're seeing these sites and you're like, oh, 25 bucks for BPC-157, or if I go to Titan, it's 275, right? Well, they're a lot cheaper, but what's the difference? The difference is if you go to one of these sites and you get, let's say, some peptide off their site, one, it's not gonna be for human consumption. It's gonna say that on the bottle, on the bottle. And where are they getting these things from? That's the next thing. So they're getting these things from China or India. They had shipped over here. And at that point, they get the pro these little products and they start shipping them out to the customers that are buying off the sites. So there's no testing that's getting done. They can say there's third party testing, but by who, right? And at that point, like you have no idea what you're injecting your body. Is it something good? Is it something bad? We really have no idea. And you really have no idea. So you're playing Russian roulette with your body by injecting something that you have no idea what the hell it is. When you go through us, you're getting it from a U.S. licensed pharmacy. It's not coming in from Titan Medical Center. At that point, it's getting third-party tested for a whole bunch of different things like endotoxin testing, sterility testing, right? You know it's going to be good. You know it's going to be the product that you want. And at that point, it's going to help. Like we say, it's going to help. So that's the big difference between getting it from a research chemical site or getting it from Type Medical Center in a real life, real life U.S. licensed pharmacy. Big difference. Big difference. All right. Question is where you do blood for is question is where do you do a blood test to a private lab or what type of lab? or just a regular clinic, I asked for a full blood test. You would call Titan Medical Center, call us up, 727-389-3220. Say you want the in-depth blood test or just a blood test for males because it's going to be in-depth no matter what. That's all we run. And at that point, we're going to set you up with a lab in your zip code. We're going to get some information from you. We're going to get the payment. We're going to send you your prepaid lab requisition slip to your email with a link that has the nearest lab locations to your zip code. All you do is type in that zip code. You'll find that lab. You don't have to set an appointment. You can go right in with that lab, slip in your ID. They're going to draw your blood, your labs. We're going to get the results in three to four business days. We're going to call you to get, go over some of these results and get you scheduled for your, your consultation with the provider. So you can go in depth with these things or order some of the different therapies that you may want to order. That easy, that simple. Johnny's killing it. Try, try. Always, brother. <laughs> no, I appreciate this. I appreciate that. We, we told a lot of people we talked to yesterday about coming back today to ask you those questions. So yeah, I'm glad no, I these it. fans are coming back out and hitting us up. Yeah. More questions, the better. All right. So there, there's one I hear. Given the re relation of insulin and testosterone is no, given the relationship of insulin and testosterone is keto a dog crap idea if you aren't supplementing with tests so i don't i've never ran keto diet i know the the principle of keto diet and running off fats instead of carbohydrates um but i've never done it myself um now i've actually done the testing where i did cut carbs to see if my body would start burning fats instead of carbohydrates because the body re literally runs on one or the other right to a certain extent and there's a breathing test that you can do and supposedly this is accurate and i did get to the point where i was you know using fat as the main energy source instead of carbohydrates but i purposely tried to do that for the test and then after that test i started eating carbohydrates again and went back in and redid the test and then it showed that I was using carbohydrates as fuel as testing. Super cool. Have you ever ran that metabolic testing, Mike? Yeah. It's like yeah. a breathing testing for 15 minutes is what you do. I haven't done that. I haven't done the, the breathing. Yeah. It's a workroom. Um, but uh, I'm not following the guy's questions fully. He's just basically saying if you're going to do a keto diet, will you run tea? 
Yeah, be I mean, it's not going to affect T, though. That You know what I'm saying? If you're going to have low T or high T at that point, one way or the other, your natural <clears throat> function. I mean, I don't think that doing keto is going to affect testosterone levels. I don't know, though. I've heard some people swear to God that their testosterone levels have jumped with keto. So I don't know that as a fact either. Like we're stuck. No, you you you, keep, you going, keep going, brother. Sorry about okay. that. Okay. I think it's right, definitely our side, our side here. All right. Um, what's your ab routine look like? So this is pretty what funny. You I mean, your, my ab routine. What do you do? Yeah. I, honestly, I don't do as much as I used to do. I, I'm going to start really getting on it for this year. Um, what I would do is uh, like lower leg lifts. So if you're on the ground supporting, or they have like a, you know, a, like a machine, like a, I guess a piece of equipment you can hold yourself up on and, and do leg lifts, or you do the old way where you're holding the straps. The only way that the only reason I don't do them on the straps anymore is because my shoulders it hurts my shoulders yeah. to do it and hang on like that. So I'll use that right. piece of equipment, or I'll lay down on the ground and start doing it. Um, you know, obviously regular crunches and sit ups inverted to the most level you can possibly invert, and then using weight along with it. So don't start off with a 45 pound, you know, uh, plate. If you can't utilize it, you don't hurt yourself right, doing right. it. I would start off with like five pounds, 10 pounds. If you're just getting started, go to the 25 pounds and start working up. I start increasing like every week where you do a weight and that should get you some, some, some pretty good abs as far as that goes. I mean, there's a whole bunch of other things you can do Russian twists. I mean, you can really start getting really, you know, advanced with what you're doing, but stick to the basics to start. I think that's, that's the key. I know a lot of people say like, um, you know, abs are made in the kitchen, you know, and do I agree with that to a certain extent? Yes. Cause you have to be lean to have abs, but abs are muscles like anything else. So you have to work out those abs. And at that point, like work lower and work higher abs, like higher and lower portions. Um, and I think obviously you'll get more muscle maturity in your abs. If you do that like that, I mean, you've got great abs. I've got decent abs. Um, but I've seen people out there, and at that point, the people that I know have really, really good abs. Some are genetics, but at that point, a lot of hard work goes into getting those abs, whether it's diet and training. Uh, mind and muscle connection is everything. Yes, it is. So if you guys don't know what mind muscle connection is, that's when you can connect directly to the muscle through the mind. And what do I mean by that? I mean, like if you're doing an exercise and you're pumping, right? So you want to feel that mind to muscle connection. So when you're pumping, you feel the blood flow going in and that contraction in the muscle because the contraction is everything. That means you're working it. You can feel it. You can go through, you know, the motion of doing it. And at that point, that's when you can really start gaining some muscle and know that your training is becoming very effective. Now, a lot of people I know, they're starting off or they're getting to the gym, don't have the mind and muscle connection. And they're asking, how do I get the mind and muscle connection? How do I get this? You know, cause I go through the motions, but I still don't feel myself connected with the muscle. And if you have problems doing this, I think that Hercules potion can definitely be a tool to utilize to gain mind and muscle connection a little bit quicker than what you would without it. And what I mean by that, I mean, if you inject Hercules potion, especially the, the, the muscle that you're working out that day, let's say it's a bicep or chest or whatever it may be, I think that honestly, you'll start feeling it right away because you start feeling that pump almost immediately and that pump stays. And as you mature more muscle, you'll start gaining that connection. And at that point, you'll start being able to do it to all the different muscles in your body. And that is the real, that's that's really a great feeling. When you can feel the mind and muscle connection, that, that's where it's at. That's the beginning. Yes, that is. Question again. Every every time. Go for it. Sure. Does excessive sexual activities cause muscle or hair loss? Actually, I think it's different, guys. Excessive sexual activity can actually de-stress you, so I wouldn't think you would lose your hair as much, or cause muscle loss. All that's going to do is cause endurance. So I guess if you're having excessive hour rounds. You might be burning some calories. <laughs> so, I mean, it's almost like a runner at that point, but I don't think that most guys are doing that. I think that most guys are doing five to 10 minutes, maybe. And that's kind of like getting on a stair stepper. 
unless you got something that's in the tank and you might go a little bit longer, 30 minutes, maybe the hour session if you're feeling numb down low. Because we do have, I, I never mentioned this on here, but we do have like pre-ejaculation meds too as well. So if you have pre-ejaculation or you come too quick per se, we had, do have some medications that can delay the effect of that too. So, you know, but majority of people are not going to do this. I don't think it's going to cause muscle loss. It's definitely not going to cause hair loss, I don't think. Unless, like I said, muscle <laughs> loss, unless you're going hour rounds, you're going four to five a day. I don't think you're going to have any problems there. You're too nice. <laughs> Maybe you could, um, for that question. Yeah. Let's say, hypothetically, you do lose muscle and hair. You going to stop having sex or ejaculating? Hell no. Hell Thank no. You. I mean, you're going to be skinny and bald, man. Skinny and bald. <laughs> skinny, bald, then you won't get no sex at all. But, I mean, think about it. I mean, if you're having sex that much, I mean, you must be doing something right. Yeah, good. <laughs> Such a, an interesting one. It says, hey, Mike. Seeing you do BCAs and EAs on top of your protein powder and smoothies, aren't you getting all these amino's just in protein powder? Thanks. Uh, I'm not. I did a blood work uh, with Titan Medical that I tested my amino um, on what levels each of the amino's were at to see if I am uh, overloading it. And so I, I do the Hercules potion. I do the EAA shots. On top of that, I have BCAs, EAAs in here in my two jugs of gallon. On top of that, um, I am doing the protein shakes and have them in there. And still, I feel great. Um, and so, no, I make sure to use all that. Here's the here's the downside. There is none. There is none. You're right. There is none. There is none. It's like, aren't you getting enough? Well, you know, I'm not going to do a blood test every single week to know it. No. I did it. I've done yeah. it a couple of times. Yeah. And it shows that I'm not. You need correctly, but I'm not overloading on it. And so yeah. if I'm doing all that and it's not overloading, it's like, wow, that shocked me. I thought for sure I'd be the guy that goes, well, you take too much. Nope. Nope. Everybody else out there aren't taking enough. And the usually BCAAs. you don't get enough you don't get enough aminos and protein powder anyway, right? Unless it's like you know. Yeah, I don't know why he spice. said that. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah he's, yeah, it's like nothing in there, right? There, there's no yeah. there's no aminos and protein. He doesn't powder know that, it's spiked because protein powders are spiked, I guess. So that's what they were spiking with, like with amino acids and stuff like that. But yeah. that's not going on anymore. So you have to get all these things. Listen, guys, if you're gonna say to somebody, listen, oh, you're gonna get it just from eating all your food or stuff like that. Can it be done? Absolutely. But at that point, you're going to have to have a hell of a diet. You're going to have to sit there and eat. And then you got to make sure that you're getting everything in. And at this point, you know, even Mike, who is so regimented and consistent with doing his supplementation, could be off on a couple things. Not all of them. He was really good on majority of those things. But if one or two things are off, hey, listen, at least we see it. And then Mike, he knows down his head, like, all right, I'm going to top this off a little bit more. And get what I need. So that's really what it needs. And if you're consistent with it, those levels are never going to go down. So at that point, you just keep doing what you're doing and you're going to be rocking and rolling. Yeah, I just, I think people, it's like they're trying to borderline stuff. And it's like, yeah, uh, I get my 220 grams of protein and the guy's, you know, 220. It's like, okay, right. Uh, I'm just doing a little bit more for me. I'm, if, if I'm 250, I'll do my 270, you know. So, All right. And, and aminos and that stuff is the same. It's like the worst thing that can happen is you can pee out some. That's it. As you just pee it out. But the worst thing is, is if I'm not taking it and I'm not doing anything, right? Then I'm not recovering. And so I just love this stuff too much. And if it's such an easy thing to do, yeah. You know, the Hercules potion is so easy, and then putting extra stuff in the drink. Just simple, simple steps. Absolutely. So for me, no, I'm not getting enough in, in my protein shakes. One more, one more good one. You got time, Johnny? Yeah, of course, of course. Mike, I'll die if you can't if you can't get rid of my remaining belly fat. Help. 
I think I think Johnny and Titan Medical can help you better than I can help you. Yeah. I can just you tell you call to eat us. right train. Yeah. Yeah, give them eat a call, right see what's train. going on. Call or text will help you get rid, rid of that remaining belly fat, guaranteed. Johnny, thanks for hanging, brother. And I'm glad that you guys are back and safe. And, and Me too. again, yeah. Olympia too. was incredible. And it was so much fun to be there with you guys and the whole team. And Peter, wow. Yes. wow. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I know you're his dad and stuff, but, man, what, what, pretty awesome. Yeah. I was definitely happy for sure. I was definitely proud of him. Uh, it was good. It's good to have him out there. I'm glad he missed no school. It was the only benefit of the hurricane was no school for Peter. So, no, no, no games, games, no school. No games, no school. So he didn't miss any. Thank God. That was that was the biggest benefit of the hurricane. That was the only upside. And he, and you guys got to meet Michael Beach, which is how great of a guy. Dude, Michael Beach is just he, he's a, a great human being too as well. That was that was definitely a great time to hang out with him the whole weekend. Um, you know, everybody. Paul Acosta. Paul Acosta, dude. Paul Acosta was, was, was another great human being. Funny as hell, right? Good personality. I mean, it's it just good people, man. It was just, it was good all the way around. Definitely was. He had a good vibe. Like it was just, you know, there wasn't no no problem like that. And the Ed Cohen was hanging out at the booth so much, and uh, it was Ed Cohen was there. Ron Jones was there. I mean, there was there was a lot of NDO champ came up. You know, wait, wait, do you guys see the kicking? I know, I know you posted something on Twitter, but wait, do you see it in full? We get that bad boy. It's gonna be be, be crazy for sure. Oh, they're gonna see it because we're gonna we're gonna invite uh, Titan Medical <laughs> on this one. Is that is that post going up soon? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, so yeah, we're gonna post up uh, the champ Titan Medical Peter oh, getting yeah. his food knocked out. Said Peter minutes. viral. Let's get Peter viral. Let's go. Let's go. When does he start his own page? <laughs> He's got his own page. I got. I'll get. I'll get whatever it is. His, his handle. He won't. You know. You don't want Dad on there. Know where it is. Whatever. I told him. He got to get it. Got to get a group. So I'll get the handle for you, and I'll have. I'll have him send it so he can. Um, so you can. We can tag him on too as well. Well, like this one says here. I appreciate you taking time, Johnny. And, and of course, man. I appreciate you guys. Info. So happy, man. So happy. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys next time. I'll talk to you later, bro. Bye, Johnny. Hey, guys. Sorry about the uh, internet today. That was on my side. Um, but Johnny gave so much great information again. Um, again, again. Uh, I see Jeffrey is doing his um, blocking people. What? Nine and a half weeks to a show. Yeah. Oh, here we go. What do you think of the tuna and water diet? Lots of cardio. Spin bike an hour a day until the last week of the show. Spin bike. Wow. You, spin yeah. Spin wow. Upstairs. Yeah. You're a savage first off on spin bikes. Um, I did that. I did that back in the 90s, the spin bike for a couple times here and there. Fun class. Quads overly stimulated. Um, good for you. Um you're nine and a half weeks out, so I'm, I'm guessing because you're on tuna and water this far out. Oh, is that right? I, I just put that together. Yeah, it says that right. Nine and a half weeks to the yeah, show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what do you think of the tuna and water diet? And so from from me not close to being ready. My head instantly went. Oh, he's a week out. Oh, so you see. My head instantly, oh, okay. That's why I got lost. Did you hear what Jeffrey yeah. said? My Jeffrey thought instantly. you were like a week out, right? Went. And that's what it would be like the last couple weeks, especially the last week, but not even the last two weeks, just the last week would be the tune in water at that point to dehydrate, get the body, get the last bit of the carbs out of the system. But nine and a half weeks makes me think that you're not even slightly close. In the sense of you have you're carrying too much body fat, because nine and a half weeks you probably still would have one or two meals of red meat. Um, your base protein would be chicken with a little, little bit of fat in there. Um, you'd still be having Options. your oatmeal, your uh, rice, uh, maybe your sweet potatoes still going down. Yes, water, um, but water is kind of a given. So I don't understand the term. Uh, water. 
um, 278. Uh, so cardio crazy. Yes. Yeah. So for nine and a half weeks out, you're 278. Then I agree with you. I think that, yeah, you're just going to have to do it. Uh, and I hope everybody else gets this too. So in that situation, you like in this situation, it. I'm okay with it because I'm assuming you're carrying an extra, an extra something and, and, and you got to get all that off. So, uh, yeah, I think this far out and then here's the great thing because you're attacking it this far out this way, maybe, maybe there's a chance you're ready three, three weeks out from the show. Right. So at that point you can fill out till the show. Um, so that's, that's an option as well. You know what I mean? So uh, good job mentally. And I think most people will miss that mental part because nine and a half weeks out and jumping on tuna and water, you're a savage. Yeah. Uh, what would be the best dumbbell bench press depth for chest growth and pain-free pushing? That's, that's you, my friend. I know guys that can barely move it. Um, and then I know guys that will bring it all the way down and rotate it out so they're even lower. So, and even both can have great chests. Yeah. It's, both can have great chests. It's, it's your best range of motion that you can do. Um, and some days you'll be more flexible than other days. But that's just kind of like you going in there and doing it. Here's the one thing, though, because you, you put this in there. So I'm trying to think on, on your statement of pain free. Uh, hopefully you don't have any tweaks right now. And, and again, range of motion won't give you injuries. So let's remove that thought. If that's kind of where you're going saying, I don't want to go too deep because that's where injuries happen. Injuries happen everywhere. It, it, it's not, it doesn't work that way. Um, so again, just stretch the best you possibly can and where you keep it on it. I would say, Understand that you're bringing in a little tricep action, a little front delt action when you're pulling it back up. But I'm okay with that. I'm not the guy that says you need to only focus on the chest when you're training the chest. Do the best you can and focusing on the chest. But if your front delts are doing some secondary work, that's their secondary muscle. It's going to do some stuff there. It's okay. Uh, are cables more optimal for chest growth due to the constant resistance? No, there's resistance on dumbbells. Hmm. So, that that is the only thing people actually. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, there's. You can just kill it right there with that. Sorry about that, but no, that's that's. You're incorrect. That there should be tension on the dumbbell throughout the whole movement. Okay, what about a barbell, Mike? Same thing there. Oh, there's, shit. there's tension on the barbell throughout what? the whole movement. Is that why it works the chest? <laughs> also, yeah. remember, you're the one that's flexing. Ooh. You're the one that's giving the tension. Ooh. So well, uh, it's a good question. I, I think I think well, that's a good question for a beginner. Because well, you don't yeah. they don't comprehend it. Yeah, and well everyone spits out online cables, 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 do this if you're young. And you're following a lot of young influencers, you'll see a lot of that shit. So what are you what are you gonna expect? Yeah. Good question, my friend. Go a couple more, Jeffrey. Um you guys are kicking this. And those well, are good for uh YouTube short. Yeah. Uh Mike, is there any merit to your metabolism slowing down if you sustain 10% ish body fat and the same amount of calories for a long time, let's say two to three years? How would you speed it up again? More calories. You don't stay with anything for two or three years. Your body's adapted to it. You got to keep your body guessing. And as you get older, keep it guessing more. Um, but I like the I like the idea because, again, these are going to be really helpful for the beginners because I think beginners think if I'm a deficit, I can lose the weight. And your body will just continue to lose weight. And that's not how it does. You guys have all heard that. You guys have heard the person go, oh, on this diet, I lost 10, 15 pounds in the first three weeks. And then it stopped. Your body adapts. At no point, none of you have not heard somebody say, you have to keep confusing the body. You all have heard that. And that has to go with nutrition, training, weight load, 
sleep, um, food intake, optional on girl. What? Nothing. Ignore that one. Uh, opinion on Tom Platt's doing squats every two weeks. Does it take that long to recover? <clears throat> Question doesn't make sense because everybody's different. Doesn't work. Life doesn't work that way. There's a lot of questions like that. Uh, for bodybuilding, should a fat dude bulk up first and tone down second, or should a fat dude lose weight first and then bulk up? You should always uh, find out what you're working with. An extreme fat does absolutely nothing for you. <clears throat> Good question, though. You guys actually good question. And the Tom Plaz thing, same thing. You know, Tom Plaz at a certain time went to once every two weeks, but we we train squats every week and leg press every week and extensions every week. Um, so adapt and move. What would you give advice? What advice would you give to someone who is skinny and trying to bulk? Heat. Simple, right? Yeah, that's it. And, but I'd give that advice to a guy that's fat and wants to build muscle. I would say eat correctly. You just got to find out where your calorie intake should be. And that's simple. That's like we talked about. Just easily just calculate out your protein intake with your body weight and then your carbohydrates double on it and then your, your fats in a healthy range to make sure that you're still active sexually, your brain's working, um, and your body's recovering. Uh, what's the uh, what's the optimal split for strength? Oh, uh, I love the power bodybuilding where it's uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. I love that. Um, but I also, you know, real young. I like the push pull the Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. But as you age, then I like how Bryce is doing the uh, three days a week. So that one's, that's great too. So again, we're going to find out because you're going to be getting stronger and getting better. And so we'll find out as you're doing it, what's best for you. But right there would be the best way to start. That's guaranteed to make you stronger, which is great because it's on average within the first nine to 12 weeks, you've got 50 pounds stronger on deadlift, 50 pounds on the squat and 25 pounds on the bench already up thing you would say to your younger self ease up Ooh. ease up ease up ease up on the ladies post nut clarity damn that's what i would say <laughs> do looks matter It goes back to that the guy saying about Trump. Trump said he only kisses pretty women. What? You don't want to kiss pretty women? That's not cool. Yeah. Uh, I asked a question yesterday about a potential collab with Devin, but the sound wasn't working. Anyways, uh, wondered if you'd incorporate arm wrestling training into your current regimen. No. Nope. Focused on different things. I love Devin, and we're definitely going to collaborate. Um, but I could arm wrestle for the next 10 years, and I, I couldn't give that man a tussle. He's an absolute savage. What do we got, Jeffrey? A couple more? How do you track electrolytes? Higher sodium intake for people living a bodybuilding lifestyle. Yeah, make sure you're just not cramping. You're good. What would, what would be the purpose of tracking it? Tracking your electrolytes? I don't know. I don't know what you're, I don't know what that, I don't know why you're using that term for electrolytes. Just make sure you're not cramping. Uh -uh. Uh, I suffer from low back pain. This happened from deadlifting when I used to train. How can I prevent the pain from getting in the way of my training? Yeah, this uh, that's 
we posted that up on YouTube. Make sure to go over there and watch that, talking about lower back and strengthening it. That's the one big thing. And then if you did hurt it, um, what do the x-rays show and what's going on? And then what's your age at? Because uh, the one thing you want to do is make sure that you do is do not run away from lower back training. Mm -hmm. And you have to keep doing it. So go watch my YouTube. And on that note, guess who's back? Come here, buddy. Come say hi. I'm the loser. No. Come here, give me a hug. Who's number one? Who's number two? Jeffrey's not much of a loser. I'm not a loser as much as me. Give me a high five. If I'm not a loser, give me a high five. Good job. Okay. High five. Boom! That's how we do it. Boom! You missed. You want to put this on? I like that. He's he's already getting into headbutts. Hey, thanks for hanging out today, guys. I appreciate you guys. Tight is home. Uh, we're slicing and dicing, and then yesterday I put something on uh, the Titan Titan crew for you guys to do check-ins. We got that over there for them, right? Yeah, check-ins are up, locked and loaded till Sunday, 8 p.m. Today is what, Tuesday? Yeah, or Tuesday, so you got a whole week to get in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whole week. Um, and what we'll do is, I guess when you, this goes live and stuff, put the uh, the link. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's going okay right now. Yeah. This makes me wonder if it was theirs. But he he was still live on it. So how's the, how's the quality on the camera look, guys? Are we back to Titan HD magnificent 4K? You can see everything. Clean, clean. Thanks for hanging, guys. Any final questions on that bad boy? Quality is great. Quality is great. Um uh, what's your favorite cheat meal? Uh, she does a, a just a fruit bowl for me is one of my favorites lately. Uh, and then she does a uh, the pasta, the pasta with the chicken pound meatballs, and a chicken cutlet on top. It's pretty sick. And I don't know if it's a cheat meal technically. It's just like an off season. If putting on, yeah. So. What do you got? Uh, has the pressure or anxiety of doing this full time for decades gotten better over time? Uh, it never got. It never got. There never has been pressure or anxiety. Yeah, right? this it's never been that. I was never the guy that. Uh, I, I was never the guy that competed in anything, except for fighting. <laughs> that uh no matter what happened i was uh wish i was the other guy i yeah i love i love what i do and i do it because i love it it's not because i, I do it for money or fame so mm -hmm. yeah no no they want the mukbangs i gotta do the mukbangs bobby sap i gotta do that and Bobby was the one earlier. He asked the question about. He had something. I forgot his question earlier. It was it was an interesting question though. I remember that. I'm gonna do the mukbangs, and by saying that, I'm messaging Danny. Danny. Hold on. This is gonna go right to camera. And a close up. Yeah. See, he is on this right here. We're doing the mukbang, but I'm doing that with Danny Joe. Uh, we will lock that date in. <laughs> All right, we're out, guys. Have a great one, man.